Hello everyone, here are the readings from the prologue for February 25th. Saint Thomasius, Patriarch of Constantinople. His predecessor, Patriarch Paul, secretly relinquished the throne, entered a monastery and received the schema. Irene and Constantine the Sixth reigned at the time. By Paul's counsel, Tarsius, who was then a senator and royal advisor, was chosen to be patriarch in the year 783. He was quickly raised through the ecclesiastical ranks and consecrated as patriarch. A man of great learning and great zeal in the Orthodox faith, Tarsius reluctantly accepted this rank in order to help orthodoxy in the struggle against heresies especially against iconoclasm. During his reign, the Seventh Ecumenical Council, Nicaea 787, was convened. Their, iconocla their iconoclasm was condemned and the veneration of holy icons was confirmed and restored. Tarsius was very charitable towards orphans and the poor, creating shelters and distributing food to them. Toward the powerful, Tarsius was decisive in his defense of faith and morals. When Emperor Constantine banished Maria, his lawful wife, and took a kinswoman to live with him, he sought a blessing for marriage from the patriarch. Tarsius not only refused him a blessing, but first counseled him, then reproached him, and finally forbade him to receive Holy Communion. Before his death, many saw how Tarsius replied to the demons, saying, I am not guilty of this sin, neither am I guilty of that sin. Until his weakened tongue could no longer speak, he then began to defend himself with his hands, drawing away the demons. When he reposed, his face lit up like the sun. This truly great hierarch died in the year 806, he governed the church for 22 years and 4 months. The Venerable Paphnutius of Kephala, monk. This great saint was a contemporary of St. Anthony the Great. It is said about him that he wore the same robe for 80 years. St. Anthony greatly respected him and used to say all that Pufnutius was a true ascetic. He was able to heal and save souls. On this day, we also commemorate the martyr Alexander at Masionopolis. Hieromata Reginus, Bishop of the Isle of Skopelos. St. Ethelbert, King of Kent. St. Wahlberger, Abbas of Heidenheim, New Haramata, Leo Korobchuk, priest of Laskov, Kelm and Podlasi, Poland. Hymn of praise to God the Creator, the Creator radiant dawned crowned with light, described by no one, expressed by nothing, he raises the wise builders of the church, zealous defenders and good shepherds. He permits sufferings because of our sins, even though, in essence, he is mercy and goodness, but as he prepares the unworkable earth with bitter frost, making it workable and ready for crops, in the same way, he mellows our hearts and with bit he mellows our hearts with bitter sufferings. 
but by his tender hand leads all to good. Through the darkness of sin, he gazes into the light, and after a designated time, he no longer permits the darkness to linger. He discerns joy through the sorrow of tears, through sorrow of tears. He sees the end of every beginning, for he began all and desires to complete all. Who will oppose him when he, when he commands? One would say he is weak, for he adroitly conceals himself with a shadow of a deed. He conceals himself. He conceals and blocks the view of himself when the shadow passes and the world reaches its end and the church triumphant is lifted to heaven. Then the sun of righteousness, which is never extinguished, will cover himself with the church as with as with porphyry. Reflection. A Christian is similar to a betrothed maiden, as a betrothed maiden continually thinks about her betrothed, so the Christian continually continually thinks about Christ, even if the betrothed is far away beyond ten hills. It is all the same. The maiden behaves as though he is constantly by her and with her. She thinks about him, sings to him, talks about him, dreams about him. And prepares gifts for him. A Christian believes in the same way towards Christ, as the betrothed maiden knows that she must first must leave and distance herself from the home where she was born to meet and totally unite with her betrothed. So the Christian knows that he cannot totally unite with Christ until death separates him from the body. That is, from the material home. In which his soul resides, and has grown from birth. Contemplation, contemplate the Lord Jesus sitting in the boat, teaching the people on there. How a great multitude of people crowded around him, crowded around to hear him, so that he had to enter the boat. How he taught them in parables about the sower, the seed, and the ground. By those comparisons and examples, which day in and day out have been repeated from the beginning of the world, and will be repeated until the end, how how he does not teach them with the aid of some rare and strange events, but with ordinary ones, which entered into time along with man and will exit time along with him, homely on the impossibility of secrets. All the secret works of man will be revealed one day. None of a man's works can be hidden. None of man's works can be hidden. The Jews thought that they could conceal from God the slaying of so many prophets, and that their bloody, villainous deed against Christ could be hidden from God and man. However, that which they thought to hide has become. A daily and nightly tale, told both in the heavens and on earth, for thousands of years. Judas thought to hide the traitorous agreement he had made against his lord, but the lord discerned this agreement and declared it to his face. Jesus said unto him, "Judas, betrayest thou the son of man with a kiss?" The Lord also discerned the hearts of the Pharisees and read that evil, read their evil thoughts. Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? What works, what things, what events in the world can be hidden from Him, who sees and reveals even the most secret thoughts in the heart of in the hearts of men? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Because of this, we need to fear, and because of this, we need to rejoice. To fear for all of our secret evil deeds 
evil desires and evil thoughts will be brought out into the open to rejoice for the good that we have performed, desired or thought in secret will be brought out to the open. If it is not brought out into the open before men, it will be brought out into the heavenly it will it will be brought out before the heavenly angels. The greater the fear for sinners, the greater the joy for the righteous. O Lord, lover of mankind, forgive us our sins and do not announce them for our destruction and the sorrow of thy holy angels. To thee be glory and praise forever. Amen. Thank you for listening to support me further and to stay tuned to the series. Please like, share, subscribe, comment and God bless. Thank you.